What's up everybody? Uh, back at the shop here finally. Uh, everything all good. Made it home all right. Had some issues with the trailer, but uh, everything's good. So um, i just working on the vlog right now and uh, I don't have a whole lot of footage leading up to Florida because stuff got crazy around here and um, the whole Florida thing, there's not much really to work with there because I didn't have anybody filming for me for one and uh, two, um, I uh, didn't qualify, so there just wasn't a whole lot of footage to work with. So, uh, first section of this vlog is going to be relatively boring, so if you really want to, you can fast forward past the boring, sort of solemn speech that I give at uh, OSW, or you can watch it if you like. Um, and uh, Atlanta went pretty well, so um, second half should be pretty exciting, so I hope you enjoy it. All right, so we're out here at uh, Formula Drift Orlando. Pro 2 is going on back there behind me. As if you, is your qualifying run or close to perfect. Goes up. And unfortunately, we didn't qualify, so we didn't make it. Um, had, I know I say this every year, but we had probably the roughest uh, time getting to this event as any other event that I've ever had. Um, I found my physical and uh, mental breaking points along the journey, that's for sure. Um, and uh, I'm, you know, I'm happy we made it here and all. I just had a lot of high hopes coming into this. We did great last season and I was hoping that I had uh, everything covered for this season. But of course, uh, as soon as we hit the track, we have our spout of random issues again. Um, so basically, long story short, I worked about 20 something hours on Friday to get the car to the dyno, or on sa Sunday to get the car to the dyno. We get to the dyno on Sunday night and uh, as soon as we do our first pull, Axles are making sparks all over the place. Apparently, Drive Shaft Shop didn't cut the threads all the way down on the axles like they did on the last one. So when the nut was fully tight, it was just tightened to the bottom of the threads. It wasn't tightened to the hub. So the hub was just bobbling around. So that created sparks, created issues. Had to go, that was Sunday, it was Easter Sunday, so no auto parts open, Home Depot's not open, nobody's fucking open. I go to AutoZone and find some washers that are just about okay to work. I had to core out the center uh, about a eighth of an inch or so, maybe more, uh, with a die grinder. This is all after a 24 hour work day, I might add. Get the axles bolted up solid, great. Get on the dyno, made uh, 750, um, no issues, no problems at all. No issues, no problems at all. Uh, we made about eight to 10 pulls, car drove great. I'm like, all right, cool, drivetrain is tested, you know, I just gotta figure out the suspension. So on Monday, uh, well, I went home, I uh, slept that night for about six hours, went down to the shop, uh, corner balanced the car because we just put all the suspension on, it was all wonky. Um, did a couple things and then kind of decided it was, it was like Monday at like 3 p.m. And I was like, you know what, we got to load up and go. So I got out of L.A. at about Monday at about 3.30 p.m., drove all the way to uh, somewhere in the middle of Texas, about 20 hours into the drive. It's a 36-hour drive to get here. Slept for uh, about five hours. No, it was more like four hours. And then um, came to uh, my buddy Omid's trying to call me right now. Go away, Omid. <laughs> go away. Um, so, and then I drove to about Mississippi, uh, couldn't make it any further. I was trying to make it straight to Njuku. Uh, I was actually trying to make it straight to Tech. I had a Tech appointment at 7.30 and I was set to arrive in Orlando at OSW at about 6.45. So I was trying to make that, couldn't do it. I could not do it. I was falling asleep at the wheel. Passed out, moved Tech to this morning, uh, left for Orlando sometime around 9 p.m. or so in Mississippi and uh, got here about 2.30 a.m. Luckily, Njuku Racing, best guys ever. Uh, they were there working on a car. Ant from Njuku let me come in and use the alignment rack. Came in, got the car aligned. It took a lot longer than I expected because we had to reach the other ones. And had to yeah, it took a little bit longer than expected because I had the new trailing arms and I had to make a lot more adjustment than uh, you know, normal. Um, so we finished up there at about 5.30 in the morning. I drive here, I get to the track at about 6.15, 6.30, and uh, pass out till about, uh, what, 
probably passed out around 7 till about 8, 8.30 and then got up and got my stuff on, got my driver's suit on and got to the driver's meeting at 9 a.m. Um, we still had to pass tech, so we came back, got the car, got over to tech. Turns out our fire bottle was expired and we forgot my harnesses for my base at the shop. So we just swapped the harnesses over, had to uh, redo the fire bottle and uh, I think there was one other thing we had to do. So we got all that done, get back, get through tech and uh, get out to practice. And uh, practice, we get out, do my first burnout, and of course, as soon as I hit the track, we have issues. Do the first burnout, and the car just stumbles and dies. And the starter is just, it just wouldn't start. I don't know what the hell was going on. The car started fine every time leading up to that, and as soon as we jump started in the pits after that, it started fine again. Cool, it started fine. We get up to the line, and just temperature just starts creeping up out of nowhere. Um, it idled fine all day, it idled, did fine on the dyno, and all of a sudden we're at 230 degrees just sitting on the grid. So uh, we pulled it back in here. At that point, I had what I would consider a uh, mental breakdown on my part. I just couldn't deal with it anymore, that, that I had tried so hard and that these random issues were just popping up out of nowhere. And I was so tired and just exhausted. My body is still all beat up. I, just couldn't deal with it anymore. I told my guys, I was like, listen, I was like, I I can't do this right now. I can't, I can't fix this car right now. And uh, so I took a nap for about an hour and uh, they burped the cooling system. And uh, the second practice session came up. We got ready, we got suited, got out. And I uh, did one laugh, sounded a little funny. We pulled it in and it turns out one of the spark plug wires had popped off and burned up on the header. So we went back to the pits, fixed that spark plug wire get back in line and uh, right as I'm pulling up to the line for my what would be my second real practice lap uh, they cut practice so is another event no practice going straight into qualifying and uh, unfortunately with this track I haven't had a lot of track time here I've never had a full practice session here first time I showed up I blew up my intake manifold on the second lap Second time I showed up, we ran about half practice and then we broke reverse gear right before qualifying. So I don't have a whole lot of laps on this track. Um, and uh, it was, you know, the first lap was okay. I did a 78. Um. Andy Hately, he is a, a longtime veteran of the sport. We've seen him come, come in, come out, Lee, Pro 2, Pro. But right now, Pro 2 competition. Nice job there by Hately. That's what we're talking about. Well settled. Massive angle there through the power alley. Is he going to be able to bring that? No, see, that's what you, you saw him kind of unwind it, not being able to catch that second inside clip. But then stands and delivers there on that second. I got too much angle coming through the center section. Uh, as I was coming off the bank, I noticed I was coming off a little late. So to bring it back into that inside clip one, I just had to pour on a bunch of angles. So I poured on a bunch of angle and that sort of set me up uh, to run wide around uh, the inner clip two, which I almost went off track there. I saved it and then just stuck the wide line all the way through, but I really lost a bunch of momentum through that section and uh, that was the 78. And then uh, second run, I tried to push a little bit harder. Side looking in, he has a 78 on his first run. Definitely no sign of seeing top 16 until potentially now. Andy Haley, show me what you got. Andy Haley getting swifty up there on the wall. Well done there by Haley. Right on that front clip, just covering it with smoke. Oh, and a small correction there as he went around that second inside clip run. Now he brings it on through. Um, I hit my clips, but I pushed a little bit too hard into the second outer zone and um, I kind of went wide on the clip there again. It just, I just didn't put it together, you know? I need more practice. It's just, it's a bummer, man, to be, put this much effort into something and uh, and have it all fall apart. Um, yeah. So, I, I mean, I guess that's my spiel for Orlando. I don't have a whole lot for you guys as far as footage leading up to the event or footage at the event. So we didn't really drive a whole lot and uh, I, didn't even have time to film a thing leading up to it, let alone check the time. I mean, I didn't, I just worked on the car for two weeks straight. I didn't look at the time. I worked till I couldn't work anymore and I slept 
until the day started and I could start making phone calls again, which was sometimes less than two or three hours because um, I usually work till four or five in the morning. Yeah, so bummer, shit happens. We're gonna get our stuff ready for Atlanta, uh, try and find a place to test the car and uh, move on. I had high hopes for this season though, you know. We did good last year when the car was running and I was hoping that I had all my bases covered to keep the car running this year. And it's just random stuff, you know. The drivetrain, essentially aside from the spark plug wire burning up and a little little BS, it, engine worked great. We had no problems there. The trailing arms worked great. Not a crack, not a break. The new design is working well, but uh, it just seems like as soon as we hit the track, we just random issues just start popping up so uh, we're gonna get more testing time in and we're gonna do better the next round other than that um, got my first real light night sleep last night in the last two weeks which felt great so I actually feel back to life somewhat today other than my body feeling like I got hit by a train my hands just are all beat up and sore as you guys can see just from beating up on myself so I'm looking forward to letting those heal and uh, spending some time on the lake in Atlanta my dog and uh, getting the car ready for Atlanta so uh, yeah I'll see you guys there sorry this one was kind of boring and all I did was really talk to the camera but uh, yeah it's, uh, it's difficult to maintain motivation in times like this you know but uh, we'll be back. We'll get it done. And I will see you guys next time. So after Orlando, I made my way up to Atlanta and camped out on the lake up there on Lake Lanier for uh, the time that I was there. Awesome place to camp, beautiful lake, beautiful scenery, forest is cool out there. Um, took the drone up, uh, did some awesome flights with that, and uh, just me and Gonzo spent some uh, good time together with the uh, you know, campfires and barbecues every night. Um, while I was in Atlanta, I took the car over to K1 Built to get some work done on it, and uh, we'll explain what I did right now. K1 Kilts. K1 Kilts. Yeah, wait, they make kilts here? Yep. All right, so we're here at K1 Built, made it to Atlanta. Obviously, I talked to you guys about that. Uh, we're going to get some stuff done on the car. I have a little vacuum sort of four into one thing that I'm going to use to run my steam ports to, so we stop overheating this thing, because the uh, it, the RHS engine block actually has higher water jackets than our old engine block, and I kind of found that out from my dyno guy recently, and that could be the problem why we had issues bleeding the car uh, last year in St. Louis, and uh, last year on the dyno as well, we had some, some issues. So we're going to run all those uh, to a little manifold thing. We're going to run that all the way back to the can in the back try and cure any sort of air bubble issues that we get in the engine. And we're also going to be sleeving up our spark plug wires and sort of bulletproofing our spark plug wire setup so that we don't have any problems in, uh, in Atlanta with that. Um, other than that, just a few other little things to do. So I'll keep you guys updated. So while on the lake, I also uh, crashed the drone for the first time. I've uh, never crashed my Mavic before. This is my second Mavic I've had. And uh, I ended up taking it to a tree and it uh, was sort of sitting right on the edge of the uh, of falling into the lake and then it just plopped right into the lake so it got like halfway wet so I took the whole thing apart and uh, cleaned all the water out of it or it broke uh, one of the arms on it so I replaced that arm and soldered that back to the board and had it back up and running again but uh, it was pretty funny I was getting a little too crazy with the sport mode and it just didn't stop in time and just right into a tree so that was that <laughs>
almost forgot. Need this part. Yeah. <laughs> I had to get this. Calm down. What? Are you ready yet? Well, you had to go put a dog away. Hey, so have like, you seen you the know, movie? I the, was uh, ready. Death Trap? Is it Death Trap? Uh, bulletproof. Bulletproof. What's the movie? Uh, What's the cage for in the bottom of the thing? Right the windows? I haven't put it in yet. Those are for the windows? Yeah. Or well, you took those off the windows. <laughs> okay. It's getting real. Yep. Probably should have left my beer. Hey, only leaning towards the center. <laughs> How is the size of this car still so good? I'm a terrific driver, yeah. That's section thing. Yeah, going up it. Yeah. That's how I got beached back there for like two weeks one time. <laughs> and I tried to go, I was like pouring rain. I tried to go up it. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, buddy. Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> hey, look, better job. We make it this time. <laughs> I had a bucket seat between you two. This is great. <laughs> it was perfect. I hit my head on the window. <laughs> Sorry. Bucket seat. Yeah. I literally for said, this side. What a jerk. So to be fair. I think a helmet might be a good idea back here. Yeah. So to be uh, fair, before we went through and I said, it's about to get bumpy. And you guys were like, no, no, no. you said, here we go. No, I said that too. But I said, oh, Do we ever take the canoe down the I hill? I still can't see anything. Oh, yeah. yeah. We're good. We got it. So after we got all the work done over at K1 Built, we were ready to hit the track. Um, I went down to uh, Nashville Super Speedway to do some testing and uh, the car just felt underpowered the whole time I was there. I only had a few hours to test and uh, I'm an idiot. Um, when I did the valve last check on the engine, uh, which is basically um, right, uh, I have to take off the throttle cable and all the other stuff above the valve cover. So I took off the throttle cable. I didn't put it back in the right spot. So I basically had half throttle for uh, basically the entire test session that I was there. But the car didn't overheat and it didn't do bad. Um, so it was just basically half throttle testing. And uh, I might use that someday when uh, when it rains uh, to see, you know, to, to give myself less power than I have. You know, it might be a good setup for the car when it rains to move that little thing to half throttle. And then uh, I'm not overspinning uh, the tires too much, um, but I thought it was pretty funny. Fortunately, before Atlanta, um, I had good rest and the car was running well. Um, we uh, sort of secretly did a new library on the car, which is uh, pretty sweet. I worked with uh, the Kaiza on that, um, who's a render god, basically. He uh, does the most amazing renders I've ever seen. And uh, I saw a render that he did on a Dodge Challenger that was uh, basically the same render as you see right here. Um, and uh, I asked him to sort of see if we could adapt that to my car. And uh, he was nice enough to do it. And he did it in a quick time frame, actually before Orlando, but we didn't have time to get it on the car before Orlando. So uh, I hit up uh, Curtis. He had a person in... Uh, in Atlanta that did wraps and uh, they did a they did an all right job on it honestly uh, it was cheap what they did you know the, the job was cheap so you know it was kind of the homie hookup type deal but uh, I really wish they put a little bit more effort into the wrap itself um, but uh, you know overall it came out pretty good you know the idea is there um, it's just not exactly like the render uh, was but uh, I'm pretty happy with it unfortunately we messed up the back a little bit here but um, 
yeah, so going into Orlando, you know, we had a fresh wrap, feeling good, car was tested, and uh, we got out there and did our thing. So during practice, we ended up burning up another spark plug wire. So we missed a little bit of our first practice session, got it fixed, got some laps in, car was feeling pretty good. Um, we go out for, or we're about to go out for our second practice session and the car just doesn't start. Um, we started going through kind of what the heck was going on. We checked uh, the, uh, the injectors with an oil light. We weren't getting injector pulse. So we knew we had, you know, some major problem like crank or cam sensor. So we uh, pulled the uh, crank sensor out and uh, noticed there was some oil on it and uh, when there's oil on it that means there's usually uh, oil in the plug so that means there's oil coming through the sensor into the plug and that's what was causing our failure pretty much and that oil can actually creep all the way up the wire through the heat shrink up and up into the ECU and fail an ECU uh, my buddy Curtis has seen that happen before so um, got that fixed burned my hands had to like move the starter and all this stuff and the starter was ridiculously hot from cranking it so many times so uh we got that done and um got back out on the track and i think we got one or two more practice laps in be right before qualifying all right so qualifying we can see the clouds coming uh about half the field got completely dry nice laps which was kind of unfair but that's just the way it goes sometimes um and uh, right as i pull up to grid i have uh, one car in front of me and uh, it just starts dumping rain, like ridiculous torrential, you know, inch of rain on the track. Somebody went out for a sight lap and then they got back in and they pretty much called it. They said, you know, rain delay. So we had a rain delay for about an hour or so until it uh, cleared up. And when it did clear up, it wasn't completely clear. It was still raining. It just wasn't pouring. And uh, the track was very wet. So since it was so wet, they gave us a sight lap. So they gave us a lap to go out before our qualifying lap to kind of feel out the track. So I went out, um, I went a little too hot into the, into the first corner and uh, just sent it right into the gravel, slid off into it backwards. I tried to, to dump it into first gear and rev it up to keep it from sliding into the gravel, but that didn't work. Um, so uh, that was my sight lap. So I go out for my first qualifying lap and um, the initiation is super tough because all the rubber on the track i kind of made it through there i dropped a tire on the inside clip uh, as i was going up the hill i kind of bobbled and straightened out and then um, just sort of barely made it through the course um, it's really tough to keep momentum up the hill when it's that wet you're going uphill and you have to keep your wheel speed uh, at a very sort of minimal window basically you know if you don't spin the wheels enough then you straighten out if you spin them too much then you just don't make uh traction going up the hill and it doesn't take you all the way up the hill like it should you kind of just end up spinning your wheels and going nowhere so to speak so um that was uh tough got through that lap and uh just waited for our next one so run number two, uh, track was kind of half wet, half dry. Um, I was watching the live stream and uh, there was like four or five drivers that just straightened out uh, right at the top of the hill. Like they thought it was gonna be wet at the top of the hill and it was not. So they go up at the top of the hill and they wouldn't basically throttle it enough uh, going into outer zone number two and um, they would just straighten out. So I decided to send it into outer zone number two. I almost oversent it, but uh, it turned out really well. Um, the initiation was rough on that run, and going up the hill, I had another bobble. It wasn't as big as the last one, and I didn't go full straight, so um, they didn't zero me out. But uh, after uh, outer zone number two, I nailed the second clip, and I kind of finished the run pretty strong. So um, the first half of the run was not very good. The second half was pretty darn good. So they gave us a 78, and uh, I think that put us in 7th or 8th place. I believe we tied with Human Rahimi, and that matched us up with Human in the top 16. 
All right, so we had top 16 practice that day, and uh, I think it was like the last lap we were gonna get. Um, I go out and I'm going through the keyhole, and um, car feels really funny. The angle started to feel funny. I just didn't know what was going on. Something was wrong with the steering. I sw I had Adam LZ behind me, so I didn't want to just stop immediately. So I switched back and uh, started drifting the other direction, and it felt fine. And then I switched back the other direction, and it just that front end of the car just gave way, and it started understeering towards the wall. And uh, I tried to sort of stop the car before it got into the grass and into the wall, because once you hit the grass, you're kind of you know gone. Um, and uh, Adam kind of slid into behind me with his his rear quarter, and then kind of tapped me with his front on the way out. Um, yeah, it turns out our wheel straight up broke uh, in the keyhole, um, probably from the dirt drop that we had before. I've had that happen before, um, where I do a really gnarly dirt drop and the wheel will be fine for uh, a few more laps and then it just breaks like that. So um, hindsight, we probably should have changed that wheel after we had that big dirt drop. Um, but uh, um, so that kind of sucked. Um, went over and apologized to Adam immediately after that. He was super cool about it. Um, didn't really care, you know, he just said, you know, it's, it's drifting, it happens, you know? Um, so, uh, uh, the wheel was broken. We got a new wheel on and we noticed that our control arm, uh, had a small crack in it near the lollipop bushing in the back, um, front control arm, because it actually got dragged along the, uh, the rumble strip as, uh, as the wheel broke. So, um, got that, uh, fixed somehow, some way. Um, <laughs> uh, we went out for top 16 intros cause we had to be out there and uh, Curtis uh, drove my car back to the pits, got the welder out, uh, welded up the control arm as best he could and drove it back out. And we got it back out there like literally right before my battle happened cause we were like the second pair up. So um, yeah, big thanks to Curtis on that one. He really came through there. Um, so yeah. We were ready for top 16 at that point. All right, so our first top 16 battle was with uh, Human Rahimi. Um, we had the lead because uh, we tied, I think, but for some reason we got, I think he might have zero. Well, we both zero in the first round, I don't know. I got seventh, he got eighth, so I was leading for the first one. Um, I had a pretty good lead, uh, no major mistakes other than not really making it to outer zone uh, two. It wasn't you know, an incredible run. And then now into that front clip through the horseshoe, transition out, Hooven Rahimi shuts her down, coming out of the horseshoe, and Andy Haley consistently sideways throughout the entirety of the course. Now. So on the chase, we both initiate. Uh, I sort of slid past him, uh, going past the first clip. I would have liked to stay more inside of him there. Um, and then he gained a little bit going up the hill, um, going into outer zone two. I gained it back going into outer, going uh, into uh, the keyhole into the final clip and uh, finished the run pretty strong. He gained a little bit on the end too when I got lost in the smoke. I didn't exactly switch back to the right place, but it uh, wasn't bad and we got the win. Coming back. So slide him left for Human Rahimi, slide him right for Andy Haley, and there it is. Andy Haley gets the win. All right, so top eight are uh, battles with Kendrick Meyer, and uh, he's got a pretty clean E36. Um, so, and he also qualified first, so I was figuring he was going to have a really good chase. Um, so I wanted to put on my A game with my chase. Uh, with him um, and unfortunately I uh, kind of straightened out going up the hill I got a little ahead of myself trying to gain ground on him because he started gaining on me going up the hill um, so that was a major mistake and then um, <clears throat> as we came through the keyhole I gained ground on him and finished uh, pretty strong there no mistakes to the finish line so for the lead uh, my initiation was Decent, you know, decent line going up the hill. We gained on him going up the hill, and I threw it into outer zone two really hard, uh, a little too hard. Um, probably should have complicated the track cooling off because uh, I sent it uh, two tires off. Just barely two tires off, but it was two tires off. So, um, because, and, and he zeroed out his chase behind me. He straightened up a few times. Um, so, technically, since we both zeroed out our chases, they went to the lead runs, and I went two tires off my lead runs, so the judges gave to him um you know it bothered me but you know rules are the rules i just feel like my mistakes were less my zero was less of a zero than his if that makes any sense you know i don't know um i just barely straightened out and he full straightened like three times so um you know but a zero is a zero so 
that was the end of that, and uh, that was the end of Atlanta. So went to the day after event at uh, Linear Speedway, had some ride-alongs with my buddy Curtis and another uh, E30 guy out there. Uh, I think it's Night Team or something like that on Instagram. Um, Diego, I think is his name. Uh, he ripped it up in that E30. Actually, it was like a stock M20, and he was just ripping it. Um, I'll, I have it on my Instagram stories. I'll try and get the footage on here, so I'll cut to the footage right now if I can get it on there. <laughs> So, yeah, that was that with drifting in Atlanta, and then I spent a couple more days on the lake. And uh, took off home. Did some cool drone flights on the way home. Made it here, here we are, back in the shop, ready to get some work done. Gotta get this car in the air and uh, grab that control arm, measure it, and get a new one ordered up from SLR. Other than that, uh, thanks for watching. Sorry Florida was boring, Atlanta was pretty cool. I did this new library, so that's exciting. But uh, yeah, I'll see you guys next time. I'm gonna be making a couple more videos for sure. I know I gotta keep telling you guys I'm gonna make more and more videos. Uh, I actually had a bunch of footage uh, from picking up the engine and getting all the dry sump and stuff installed, uh, but I just, time got crazy, and uh, once the footage is kind of old, it's just kind of pointless to put out. So, um, But I will be going up to take over Northwest up at Oregon Raceway Park, so that'll be our next event, and uh, try and get some good footage up there for you guys. Hopefully some drone stuff too, because I believe they allow drones there. So that's it, dudes. I will see you guys next time. Later.